Antibiotic overuse is a major problem. You might be surprised to hear this, but dermatologists prescribe more antibiotics than any other major medical specialty. Much of this antibiotic use is per acne, most commonly antibiotics like doxycycline or minocycline. Well, now we have a new narrow spectrum tetracycline called sericycline. Is this going to help us solve our issues with antibiotic resistance and damage to our good bacteria in the microbiome? And what does this new option mean for our patients with acne? I'm Dr. John Barbieri, a board certified dermatologist and acne and rosacea expert at Harvard Medical School. Let's dive into the data to figure out the answers to these questions. But why do we even use antibiotics for acne in the first place? Although acne is a non-infectious condition, it's characterized by inflammation in the skin and overgrowth of the acne bacteria C. acnes. And tetracycline antibiotics like doxycycline and minocycline, they can both reduce inflammation and they can also reduce activity of that C. acnes, that acne bacteria. Now, sericycline is the idea of let's take doxycycline or minocycline, let's make it great at anti-inflammation, let's make it great at getting rid of that C. acnes, acne bacteria, but let's actually try to make it terrible at getting rid of other bacteria to try to reduce off-target effects on our good bacteria in the skin and the gut microbiome. And when we look into the data, sericycline actually does a pretty good job of this. It has similar effectiveness against C. acnes, the acne bacteria, as doxycycline, minocycline, but it has much less activity against our good bacteria in our gut, and it also has a little bit less activity against our bacteria in the skin. In addition, sericycline seems to work pretty well for acne. When we look at the phase three clinical trial data, it has good effectiveness, especially for inflammatory acne. Now, when it comes to whiteheads and blackheads, comedonal acne, in general, antibiotics like sericycline, doxycycline, minocycline don't do as well, and you're better served by something like a topical retinoid or benzoyl peroxide. But for inflammatory acne, it really does seem to work well. And notably, when it comes to side effects, it seems to have very few. It has low rates of gastrointestinal stomach upset. It has low rates of yeast infections, which can be common issues with oral antibiotics for acne. In addition, it doesn't seem to be as photosensitizing as doxycycline, and it doesn't seem to have the neurologic side effects like vertigo that we can see with minocycline. So overall, it seems like an option that has good effectiveness against acne, and it seems to have relatively better side effects than our other common antibiotics that we use. So overall, sericycline has a lot of strengths. It works well for treating acne. It seems to have lower rates of side effects than a lot of our other common antibiotics we use, like doxycycline or minocycline. And it has theoretical advantages when it comes to the microbiome. However, it's currently expensive and can be difficult to access. When it's generic and affordable, I think honestly it will be the main antibiotic we use for acne. However, for now, for patients who want to be on an oral antibiotic to treat their acne, doxycycline is likely fine for most. It's inexpensive, it's easy to access, it works for acne, and it's affordable. For those who might have stomach issues, for those who might be more worried about long-term antibiotic use or the microbiome, or for those you know, who are less worried about costs, I do think sericycline is a good option to consider, but for the average patient with acne, doxycycline is probably where I would still start. Finally, even better than using a narrow spectrum antibiotic like sericycline would be not using an antibiotic at all. Although sericycline does have some theoretical advantages when it comes to the microbiome, it's still an antibiotic and it probably still has some effects on our microbiome, our good bacteria. The fact of the matter is, antibiotics are not a curative treatment for acne. They can't cause a remission. And so many patients end up on oral antibiotics for many months to years when it comes to treating acne. In addition, when we talk to patients, over three quarters of patients who are prescribed an antibiotic for acne would prefer a non-antibiotic option if it were available. And fortunately, we have a lot of good choices here. For women with acne, we have options like spironolactone or combined oral contraceptives that can get at the hormonal drivers of acne. We also should think about isotretinoin more because that is a treatment that can lead to remission of acne. While it's not without its own risks and challenges, for patients who are gonna ultimately end up needing it anyway, there certainly are some strengths of trying to start it earlier to be able to take advantage of, of those strengths of this medication. We've got a bunch of other videos on our channel talking about these options for those who are interested. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like to share it with more people with acne so we can spread this information throughout the community. If you have questions about acne, ask me about acne in the comments below. And for more acne and rosacea content, please subscribe to our channel. See ya.